All right, friends, talking about the monitoring the progress of labor. Now, understand why the monitoring is important. Guys, the monitoring is important because we want to pick up women or identify women during labor who are not progressing at the right pace or whose progress is slower than normal or whose progress has halted completely. All right, because we want to achieve what? Normal vaginal delivery for them. Hannah, and that is possible if the labor progresses normally. So to identify the abnormalities of labor, we have to first understand how labor progresses normally in the majority of low-risk women who enter spontaneous labor with singleton pregnancies, right? So there is a normal criteria. Again, normal labor stands for who? For Pregnancies which are at term, pregnancies which are single term, pregnancy which allow spontaneous progression and without any undue interference, that is eventually what normal labor is going to be, right? So, we have to ascertain how labor progress normally. So, first of all, we will talk about the Friedman's curve because it was Friedman's who gave us this idea how labor progresses normally in the majority of women. After that, we talk about the WHO modified partogram because Friedman gave us the curve, right? He gave us the idea. Partogram is a tool which is developed, uh, you know, taking the principles from the Friedman's curve. And the WHO made a modified partogram to help us monitor labor. So, we have to talk about that also. And lastly, we are going to talk about the abnormalities of labor progression, okay? So, these are the important broad topics which we are going to discuss in this lecture, alright. So, talking about the Friedman curve first, okay. Let us look at the Friedman's curve. Now, according to Friedman, alright, Friedman studied a number of primary gravida women who were low risk with singleton pregnancy at term and who entered into labor and then delivered normally vaginally. So, he studied a number of those women and he tabulated the results and he made a graph and he said that this is how most of the women are going to progress in labor who eventually deliver vaginally. So, according to Friedman, the first stage of labor Okay, remember the stage 1 of labor from full dilatation to, sorry, from onset of uterine contractions or labor pains to full dilatation of the cervix. So, from 0 cervical dilatation to full dilatation that is 10 centimeter dilatation given on the y axis here. This is called as the stage 1 of labor. And after that is the second stage of labor. The next is the stage 2 of labor. All right. Now, in the first stage of labor, according to Friedman, is divided into two more phases. Stage 1 is further subdivided into the latent phase, the slower latent phase. This one, which on an average is about 8 to 12 hours. 8 to 12 hours is the average duration of latent phase. So, it is a slow phase. From 0 to what dilatation is the latent phase according to this graph? According to this graph or originally according to Friedman, he had said 3 centimeters. Guys, he had said 3 centimeters. But now the WHO in its modified partogram says 4 centimeter is the cutoff for active phase dilatation. Okay. So, stage 1 is the slow phase that is latent phase and the second phase is the active phase. Okay. Second phase is the active phase all right and active phase according to WHO is supposed to begin at 4 centimeter or more than 4 centimeter dilatation is when the active phase begins all right there is a new change to it where the American guidelines are saying that active phase should be considered as 6 centimeters I agree to that change I also will talk about that change but that is more um, you know, uh, important while clinically decision making, all right, while making clinical decisions. As far as the WHO says, 
as far as the partogram that is available in our labor rooms as of now as far as the labor care provision that is being done all right it's not always the doctors it's not always the interns it's not always the pgs who are monitoring labor the nurses the anms right the skilled delivery personnel who are working in the phcs and the chcs they are also using that very partogram and as of now the active phase uh, starts for them for all of us according to the who partogram so who has uh, ho has not changed its interpretation of the partogram as of yet so it is still 4 cm is the active phase i will tell you the relevance of 6 cm dilatation when we'll come to the clinical management of abnormalities as of now please remember that there is a latent phase slow one there's an active phase all right and due during this active phase the dilatation proceeds faster all right so there is an acceleration phase the first part then there is a phase of maximum slope and finally in the last you know 2 cm maybe there is a deceleration phase so it's an s shaped a uh, graph of normal labor progression all right so during this phase of maximum slope rapid cervical dilatation take place and there is a rate attached to it please remember they ask you this question what is the rate of cervical dilatation average rate of cervical dilatation during the active phase all right during the active phase so in primary gravidas who are laboring for the first time the rate of cervical dilatation is 1.2 cm per hour on an average and in multi gravidas multi paris women who are delivering not for the first time but uh, lay beyond that their dilatation should proceed on an average at a rate of 1.5 cm per hour all right so this was the friedman's curve this is what he said that there is a slow latent phase and finally there is an active phase where this uh, the dilatation is expected to proceed at a certain rate so we can time the uh, labor progression once the woman goes into active phase all right and then ultimately there is finally a second stage all right during second stage after full dilatation of cervix it is the maternal bearing down efforts uh, which will come into play all right maternal bearing down efforts uh, should be starting now in the second stage okay so this is about the friedman's curve let us see how this has been adopted by the who right so initially when uh, who adopted this um, friedman's curve they adopted it as such so they had a latent phase in the partogram they had an active phase in the partogram now as of today what is there is a modified who partogram in this modified who partogram there is no latent phase okay because uh, simply because that latent phase is too long and uh, it is variable uh, for many women and uh, no clinical intervention is usually done in the latent phase it is expected to be very slow progression and um, that is why you know it is something where partogram is not supposed to be plotted so modified who partogram okay important point about this partogram to remember is that it has no latent phase all right no latent phase and the plotting of this begins plotting begins in active phase plotting begins in active labor okay that is important now what do we plot in the partogram apart from of course the dilatation of the cervix importantly this is a utility tool this is a labor room utility uh, utility tool which can be read and used by everybody so it is supposed to be simplistic all right and it is a tool that when we look at it we can get 
every information about the patient all right so we know how the patient is doing in labor how she is progressing how is she herself doing how is the baby doing every information can be gauged by a single look at the partogram so if i am uh, in a 12 hour shift and my shift ends and my woman has not delivered as of yet the second person comes my reliever comes and i have to tell her i have to give her a long history of what i did for 12 hours with this woman how has she progressed i tell her with the help of a partogram there is a visible record one can go through it all right and so what have i done i have ideally plotted the partogram alongside all right so if i may say so and ask you people to recollect how is the partogram plotting done in our labor rooms in our country most of the times we have seen so what happens is that uh, whose job is it to do the partogram filling right it comes on the interns sometimes it comes on the pg first years it comes on uh, the final year sometimes and all this happens because there is excessive case load there is so much work to do labor room there is patients delivering on this bed on that bed and it's chaotic and it's hectic and on top of that there is a the paperwork to do there are delivery notes to write there is so much to be done and then there is a partogram that needs to be filled and it is invariably done after the woman delivers then her case sheet is being completed retrospectively plottings are done on it and then job done it's has been reduced to a mere paperwork but guys it is not mere paperwork please appreciate that it is a utilitarian tool designed to help us monitor women and to identify abnormalities all right and so coming to what is the information that is provided by this partogram here we have the name the patient details of course we have the patient details the name the gravida she is the para right the hospital number uh, is also provided the date and time of admission right the time of rupture of membranes whether the membranes have ruptured or not that is also been provided fetal heart rate is being measured fetal heart rate is being measured look at it this here now these are small boxes okay so these small boxes equal to the small box is equal to 30 minutes or half hour okay and this big box which is comprised of two small boxes this big box is on the x axis equal to 1 hour okay so this big box denotes 1 hour and the small box is about 30 minutes is 30 minutes so as we can see here the fetal heart rate is plotted at 30 minute intervals all right so when the low risk woman is laboring whenever the there is a low risk woman in active labor low risk women in active labor the fsh is monitored fsh is monitored every half hour every half hour or 30 minutes all right and in high risk women ideally they should be under ctg a monitoring but if it's a high risk woman then the frequency of fsh monitoring is 15 minutes okay it's going to be every 15 minutes uh, in high risk women in active labor all right apart from fsh as we can see here the status of the amniotic fluid c stands for clear liquor if it's blood stain it will be b if it's meconium it is going to be m so color of the amniotic fluid liquor the presence of molding or not molding whether present or not the status of molding is also given right there is a big box here which is our most important box where cervical dilatation all right and the descent is also plotted and both these are plotted on the y axis the x axis is the time guys okay so this x axis is the time and the y axis is the cervical descent and sorry cervical dilatation and the uh, descent of the fetal head all right so time is here apart from that contractions are plotted now these contractions are plotted every 10 minutes the number is every 10 minutes so if i am for for example in this figure 1 2 3 4 5 one contraction is plotted as one 
टू कॉन्ट्रैक्शन आर प्लॉटेड एज टू थ्री कॉन्ट्रैक्शन आर प्लॉटेड एज थ्री एंड फोर कॉन्ट्रैक्शन आर प्लॉटेड एट फोर सो इफ अ पर्सन एट एट दिस हाफ आवर दिस इज हाफ आवर दिस स्मॉल बॉक्स इज हाफ आवर कॉन्ट्रैक्शन आर ऑल्सो चार्टेड एवरी हाफ आवरली टू वन आवरली सो इफ इन द फर्स्ट हाफ आवर यू नो आई हैव चार्टेड फोर बॉक्सेज दैट मीन्स द पेशेंट इज गेटिंग फोर कॉन्ट्रैक्शन एवरी 10 minutes so number of boxes equal to number of boxes equal to the number of contractions in 10 minutes so if four boxes are covered that means there are four contractions in 10 minutes if the boxes are shaded completely like this okay that means that these are representing four good contractions so if the boxes are completely shaded if the boxes are completely shaded that means these are good contractions okay good contractions if the boxes are let's say if the boxes are lined if the boxes are obliquely lined that means these are moderate contractions okay if the boxes are dotted if the boxes are dotted filled with dots filled with dots then this would mean these are mild contractions okay so three boxes dotted means three mild contractions in 10 minutes three boxes that are lined obliquely means three moderate contractions in 10 minutes in this case here there are four boxes which are totally shaded that means there are four good contractions in 10 minutes all right so this is how the contractions are charted